Hi, this is Father Mark Higginsi, Miles Maria, the Soldier Mary. I want to talk about Peregrinatio Pro Cristo, big three words actually, and um, in Latin, and it means like traveling for Christ or pilgrimage for Christ. And this is something the Legion of Mary does, which is maybe one of the most amazing things about the organization. Members of the Legion of Mary go to a different parish, they travel for Christ, they go to a parish, they spend a week there or at least a week maybe two weeks maybe a month but normally a week doing seven hours of home to home a day knocking on the doors in the parish sharing the truths of the catholic faith with everyone they meet and making lots of um, notes about their visits uh, as much as they're able to it's a week of evangelization um it is great in so many levels i, I have one this year in my parish so i want to go through uh, what it meant, what the preparation was like, and, and maybe something of what happened. Preparation. You have to arrange somewhere for the legionaries to stay. Some of them stayed in my presbytery here. Uh, one night, I think we had six people staying here, and we, uh, we don't, you know, don't have that many bedrooms. It meant blowing up beds and buying um, linens and things and pillows. We had 12 legionaries, so you have to find room for them to stay in the parish. Then you need to arrange to feed them. You know, I, I and, my, and the parish secretary cooked food for them every day. And also some parishioners brought in some food, thankfully, so it make it made it a bit easier. So every day they've got daily mass, they've got a daily rosary and the legion meeting. And then they go out and they do their visits. And I prepared a, a leaflet to go through all the doors. It's not actually this leaflet. This is our standard kind of parish about the parish leaflet kind of thing. Um, when we ran out of the mission leaflets, this was the one that they had to use because I printed. I had loads of the other one printed, but they did more doors than I had anticipated. They did something like, like nearly 5,000 homes were visited that week. What I did prior to their visit is I divided my parish into six different areas. So this is one area map. Um, now, that's actually that's not actually an area map. Sorry. Well, this is the work they did for the week in a big parrot, in a big map, in a big map. And basically, uh, the, I, subbed, I, I printed out um, little zones of the parish and there were six area leaders. And, and so the uh, partners were kind of alternated each day to do the visits. The schedule was uh, we had our meeting at 9 a.m. Then we had our mass at 10 a.m. Then they began their work um, as soon as they were able to after mass, not stopping too long. Then they worked until 1 p.m. Is that right? They did two and a half hours work, whatever that is. They did two and a half hours work. And then they did um, a break for an hour. Had a break for an hour. Then they did another two and a half hours work. And then they had a break for an hour. And then they did another two and a half hours work. And then they came back and they wrote up their notes because as they were doing their visits, they used like a pad, maybe something like this one, you know, and they wrote down the number and whether it was like no interest, no reply. If they met the person and they were interested, they'd ask them, can we take some details? You know, do you mind if we keep a record of our visit? And if they did, they would take the person's name and especially if they were someone that wants me to get in contact with them. And so we did that. Um, statistics. Oh, yeah. And so at the end of the day, we, we had these sheets that they filled in where they put the road name at the top and then they put the house number, the name of the person, the details and the status. And so I have like a whole folder. It's actually this folder, which is full of um, the results of their work. The results of their of their work, and so what can I say from the the week that that we had this? It was in June this year. I mean, there have been some great fruits. There have been great fruits from their visit. There were good fruits in terms of um, people in the parish seeing what it is to um, that this. This evangelization is intrinsic to being a Catholic and to be a Catholic is to be someone that shares your faith. So they 
that was passed on. They got to see people, the, people, the few people that come to daily mass here, got to see these legionaries deeply committed to their faith. Um, some of them are never married, just devoted to the Legion of Mary. Others married, but they've uh, maybe their children are old enough to stay at home on their own or they, their children have left home. So they were able to come for the week to do this visits. And on Sunday, the Saturday, the Saturday evening and Sunday mass, the parish got to see them at those masses as well and, and would have been impressed by them. So there was a kind of kind of positive thing in that respect, but even more so. It did good for the Catholics who were met on the door, because when the legionaries met Catholics, it kind of just encouraged them in their faith a bit and was po were positive about what I was doing in the parish. Because, as you might imagine, um, you know, I, I've been here a year and some people are like me. Some people are not too keen about some of the things that, that have changed in the parish. Uh, but the legionaries were able to kind of get people to see the bigger picture. You know, sure, you might miss the fact that there's no sign of peace. But like, you know, don't let that be something that stops you from growing in holiness and stops you uh, practicing your faith um, and and going to mass and the sacraments. They just kind of cut through some of the silliness that happens um for, for some that has happened for some uh, practicing Catholics and encouraging practicing Catholics to, to, you know, they give the witness of their own. Uh, the legionaries give the witness of their own Catholicity and uh, their devotion to the sacraments. And they kind of just inspire that for the Catholics they meet. Then they met plenty of lapsed Catholics. They met plenty of non-Catholics who had some interest in the faith and um I mean, since the visits have taken place, um, we've definitely had people returning to the, the practicing the faith here in this parish. Um, I mean, probably, I mean, it's a small parish. It's a small parish. You can see from the map, it's not a massively built up area. But um, I think we've definitely had like five people returning back to their faith and and sticking with it, which thanks be to God. Um and this parish has only got a, a weekend attendance of like a hundred on a good week and on a bad week, um, you know, 70. Some non-Catholics showed some interest, but um, I have pursued them. I pursued, followed, followed up those situations. And in terms of one visit from one person on your door to then want to then, you know, begin a course of instruction, it's quite a big thing. So um, it's mainly about planting seeds as they say and this is their visit is hopefully part of a chain and is part of a chain of events in in those individuals lives that will continue so the legion of mary peregrinati pro cristo it's open to anyone who is a member of the legion of mary to, to go on this project and also to seminarians and to priests and to deacons and to religious sisters they can go on it even if they're not members of the Legion of Mary. And I know when I was at seminary, one of my kind of apostolates was trying to get fellow seminarians to come with me on projects. And, you know, I did get some. I managed to encourage some. I had, um, um, I think I had in total, I think I can remember five, five, um, came with me and actually one priest friend of mine he did some work when the legionaries came to our parish and actually when he was on a pastoral placement year he joined the, the legion of mary so he's a good a good friend of mine and um and obviously i was able to work with the team um every day every day i did i did home to home with them because as god would have it we were down a member it wasn't actually 12 members it was 11 members uh, that came one of them wasn't able to come at the last minute. And so I had been hoping to do the work, but I thought it would be basically me and then getting um, a local legionary to come. And so I would then pair up as well. So I'd be able to go out every day. Um, and also my friend, the other priest, he, he said he was willing to, to come and do the work as well. And there's a local um, 
yeah, they were the ones basically. Um, and so um, I did make, I did work uh, every day and some days I did, I think I did a whole day, which was um, pretty draining. It was one of the hottest weeks uh, we had over the summer. And I had to do, the, I was doing all this other stuff and I had the car, so I was driving people around the parish, uh, picking them up again. Um, it's such an amazing thing. If you are a priest, then definitely arrange to have a pair of an Archipo Christo in your parish, uh, especially if you're in England. Or, uh, you know, in England, it's really easy to get projects. Um, in America, I don't know what the deal is like. Maybe there aren't so many projects around the States. I don't know. There should be, I guess. Um, if you are um, involved in running a parish or a member of like a parish council or something, propose having this project. You can pay loads to have the Redemptress come to your parish and do some mission. And it's, just, you know, you don't, it doesn't cost the parish anything to have the, the Peregrinatio. The legionaries give you money to stay with you. They pay their own way. They pay their flight, their accommodation. It really doesn't cost the parish anything. They give you money for food. Um, so it doesn't cost you anything. And you get all this evangelization uh, that happens in your parish. Uh, it is such a, and, and such a boost to the parish. So that's a bit about Peregrinatio Bar Cristo. I have done, um, I think I've done 20 Peregrinatio Bar Cristos um, because between the ages of 19 or maybe 20, 19, 20, and the age of 30, when I was 29, when I was ordained a priest. Actually, I did a project that year as well. So the age of um, 19 and 30, I did two a year. So I definitely have done more than 20 projects. And I did some um, when I was 30, 31, 32. The last project I did visiting another parish was, was yeah, when I was... um was uh 31 i think or maybe maybe 32 uh, then i became a hospital chaplain and my life was legion of mary work basically <laughs> doing kind of visits every day um like that you know random people and talking to them about the truths of the faith so um um but it's such an amazing thing. priest should go on projects because it um keeps you rooted in what it is to be an apostle, a uh, disciple, um, keeps you rooted in, in, in the fact that you're someone that's meant to go to people with the faith and not just have people come to you uh, asking questions and stuff. And it reminds you, it gets you back and it gets you, um, you know, you get, li you get uplifted by the, by the lay people that you are doing the projects with because they're all such committed Catholics. He's, if you think about it, people that are willing to give up a week of their holiday um, to go to some random place just to share the truths of the faith. You know, they're pretty great people. OK. May Almighty God bless you. May Our Lady intercede for you. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.